Hey guys, this is Callum from English Sheeting and welcome back to the channel. You've probably seen a lot of videos on this channel revolving around IPSC and there's been a lot of questions recently of what exactly is IPSC? You hear of the UK PSA, the US PSA, IPSC and all of these world shoots and championships and level threes. And I think a lot of people get confused about exactly what the structure is and ultimately what IPSC is. So I thought I'd sit down and try and relay as much knowledge that I've picked up over the past few years and try and give some clarity. The best comparison that I can make with what IPSC is, it's like the FIA that runs motorsport championships. It's like FIFA that runs football championships. And of course, the FIA is responsible for the pinnacle of motorsport, which is the Formula One championship. And of course, FIFA are responsible for the football world cup. And just like those organizations are responsible for sort of the pinnacle of their sports, IPSC is arguably in charge of the pinnacle of practical shooting. It was founded in 1976 after a growing interest in practical shooting out in California, starting from the 1950s. And a name that should be very familiar with any practical shooter, Jeff Cooper, was the first IPSC president. Now, whilst practical shooting started for self-defense purposes, the sport has moved wildly away from that. It is not about defensive tactics, it's not about offensive tactics, it is purely about sport. And certainly, more recently, there has been a big, big drive to make it more professional looking, to make it more sportsmanlike looking, because Ultimately, the IPSC is going for the Olympics. If IPSC and practical shooting can get into the Olympics, it would elevate the sport to new levels. So they're making sure that everything is perceived correctly by the public and that it looks as professional as it can. Now, IPSC stands for the International Practical Shooting Confederation, and it is the ultimate governing body for the worldwide sport of practical shooting. It has then franchises that are responsible for regions. Now they're not necessarily for each country, but they are referred to as regions. So the UK PSA is the United Kingdom Practical Shooting Association, and it is responsible for the UK region. There is though a separate region for Northern Ireland. So the UK PSA really only covers England, Scotland and Wales. The US PSA is responsible for the United States. And whilst the running of the organisation, whilst certain criteria for entering matches, going abroad, shooting internationally, may be different from region to region, they are all under the IPSC umbrella and there are a whole host of rules that they cannot deviate in order to call themselves IPSC. And ultimately, that's what IPSC is mainly about. It is having a fair, predictable and consistent set of rules, meaning that you can go to any IPSC sanctioned match across the world and it should be exactly the same. All of the commands will be the same, the targets will be the same, the minimum requirements for each level of match will be the same, which means it's consistent and most importantly, it's fair. And speaking of matches, we've talked before about level one, two, three, four, and five matches. It can get, again, a bit confusing. Level five is the ultimate. It is a world shoot. You see thousands of competitors come from all over the world to see who's the best in that particular discipline and division of shooting. You then have different levels falling below that. So level four, that's like the European Handgun Championship. Whilst it was a big, big match and it was a discipline championship, it wasn't as big as a world shoot, so therefore, and wasn't sanctioned as a world shoot, so therefore was level four. Level three is what you see most commonly here in the UK, certainly for mini rifle and shotgun. It's sort of the highest level before things get really, really serious, and there are a whole host of additional requirements. Level twos and level ones are more club level matches. There's less 
rules, less requirements, and they're much easier to be able to set up, meaning that clubs can run them regularly and more consistently. World shoots only seem to happen every you know, two to three years. They're big events. They take a lot of time and effort to, to get them running. So you want to be able to have matches at lower levels that people can get more experience from and most importantly, train from. Speaking of the divisions and disciplines, within IPSC now, pretty much every practical discipline is covered. You have, of course, handgun, which can have both pistols and revolvers. You have rifle, you have shotgun, and a couple of new additions. You have PCC and mini rifle. And the only non-live fire discipline, action air. So there's something for everyone, and certainly that benefits the UK greatly, where we can't have full bore semi-automatic rifles or even normal length handguns. So the disciplines like mini rifle give us something else that we can go and compete on the world stage. One of the things that makes IPSC fair and consistent other than just the general rules is also stuff like the scoring system which is known as Comstock. It was created by somebody called Walt Comstock, hence the name, and it's a formula between points and seconds. When you go onto a stage, targets will have certain points and of course the aim is to do that stage as quickly as possible, but of course there is a balance between the, the speed at which you do it and the amount of points that you pick up. This also complements the motto of IPSC, which is DVC, which stands for Precision, Power and speed again signifying the balance between the the speed and the accuracy and precision that is required to get the best overall score and you might be asking well where does power come into well that's another section of the rules and that is power factor and power factor is a relationship between the weight of the bullet that you're using and the velocity of that bullet. So effectively muzzle energy. And there will be certain minimum power factors for each division or classification and certainly within uh, each section of the sport. Shotgun will have a different power factor to rifle and rifle different to handgun, so on and so forth. But also we're within each discipline, so within, say, handgun, you will have major and minor power factor. If your gun is producing more recoil because it has a higher power factor, that gun is going to be harder to control, and therefore you to keep things fair, you should have some advantage in terms of the points. Once the targets are the same for everyone, the scoring zones will change, or the amount of points available for each scoring zone will change. That allows a major power factor shooter to be able to maybe pick up a, a Charlie or, or a Delta, but still score in level with a minor power factor who is obviously controlling the recoil a lot easier and able to go a little bit faster. Again, this keeps everything balance and keeps things fair. Now talking about the target, this is another reason why IPSC is so consistent and fair across the world is everybody uses the same targets. They are made to the same specifications no matter what country you are in. If you fly out to a rifle world shoot uh, in Sweden, the targets used there are going to be the same as a, a local club match level two, level one. And again, this means that people can train consistently and they can compete consistently. Now, the main paper target, there are various different sizes. They, you can get really small mini ones, micro ones, and obviously full size ones. And each target will have an alpha zone, a Charlie zone, and a delta zone. And depending on what power factor you're shooting, there will be associated points for each zone. Usually it's two hits on target that you're looking for and ideally two hits in the alpha leading to the well-known common phrase double alpha so the other score that you can get on a target aside from alpha charlie or delta is of course a mic standing for a miss definitely something you don't want to be doing in competition now the specifications don't just stop with the paper targets there are also rules and guidance and specifications on 
poppers. So even the steel targets will be made to a very defined set of dimensions and rules, keeping things fair, keeping things consistent. This doesn't mean that you can't have a little bit of fun sometimes. The range builders and designers do get a bit creative sometimes, and this comes through the help of frangible targets, usually clay pigeon discs. These can be thrown about, these can be dangled, these can be put stationary. There's loads of things that you can do to them as long as it's consistent for every single competitor. If one flies faster and higher up in the air for one shooter compared to another, that isn't fair, that isn't equal, and it needs to be repeatable. So hopefully by now you've understood a little bit more about what IPSC is and maybe are tempted to go out and join it. And the last thing that I haven't covered is the different divisions within each discipline. So whilst you have different disciplines, handgun, rifle, shotgun, PCC, mini rifle, you will have different divisions within those disciplines. And this allows people to do certain modifications to their gun, allows to shoot different types of guns. And again, it's there to make sure that people are competing on a level playing field. Take a shotgun, for instance, you have open division, standard division, standard manual division, and modified. The reason you have these different divisions is because it would be unfair for a standard shooter to go up against an open shooter. This is another great thing about IPSC is you really can find something specifically for you. You can try different disciplines. You know, Maybe you're not the best handgun shooter or rifle shooter but you're absolutely wicked with a shotgun. Well there's a whole uh, discipline on that and then maybe within shotgun you're not so good with the semi-autos. Maybe you don't fancy an open and then you want to go standard manual because you like a good pump action so really you can nail it down find what you like and then excel specifically within that division so there we go really a complete overview of what ipsc is i hope this has been helpful if you have any more questions please drop them in the comments section below thank you very much for watching this video i hope you've enjoyed it and if you have please give it a big thumbs up and please make sure you're subscribed for any future videos and as always guys i hope to see you soon Thank you